Here we continue looking at the flow around a cylinder and what we will do is compute the forces which are exerted on such a cylinder. So what is the force exerted on a cylinder? Well, you have to uh, integrate now um, the, the sum of all of the stress vector which are applied at the surface of that cylinder. So if this is my cylinder here, you have your cylinder and this is the surface of your cylinder. At every single point along this surface we have a normal vector n and on an element of surface ds we have a stress vector uh, which is applied and so we have to integrate the stress vector on the entire surface. So the force is going to be equal to the integral over the entire surface s of our stress vector, which from the Cauchy stress tensor is just equal to the stress tensor times the normal vector. And that is equal to, of course, our we have the uh, Newton, Newtonian constitutive law for our, stress, um, for our stress tensor, and that is minus P times the identity plus two mu times the rate of strain tensor. And we dot it with the normal vector times ds. Now, what is that equal to for the cylinder? Um, we are at the surface of a cylinder and therefore the vector n is simply the radial vector, the, ve the vector in the radial direction. This n vector here or here is really the vector in the radial direction. Our surface ds is at the surface of a cylinder. The cylinder has a radius a, remember, <clears throat> and therefore the element of surface is a d theta, that is the length of this small element here and of course there's another length scale coming outside of the board because this is a 2d problem but i'm not going to to include it here um, and what is that what are we integrated on we are integrated from theta equals zero to two pi now there's something else because we've been assuming the flow to be inviscid right we are not going to take into account this part of the viscous stress tense of, of the stress tensor which corresponds to the viscous stress because we are assuming that uh, the flow is inviscid and therefore we are not we are not imposing a no slip boundary condition at the surface of the cylinder and so this part of the stress tensor we do not include so we are only integrating the pressure uh, component of the uh, stress vector um, along the entire surface and so therefore our integral it just looks like our force is going to be equal to the integral from theta equals 0 to 2 pi of minus p uh, times r on the r vector note that this is the pressure taken at the surface of the cylinder and uh, this pressure can be deduced from the strong form of the Bernoulli equation here assuming that we have a um, steady flow. So what is Bernoulli? From Bernoulli we know what the pressure is and so for potential flows um, which are steady we know that the pressure um, at the surface of the cylinder plus one half times rho times the flow velocity at the surface of the cylinder is equal to and we can we don't we're not limited to uh, employing Bernoulli um, across a stream at, at a streamline along a streamline we can directly identify with any point in the flow and we're taking a point which is far away All right so here oops here at infinity we know that far away the velocity is u and that the pressure is the pressure at infinity and so we can reorganize the terms and just keep the pressure on the left hand side and so we this finally yields that our pressure is equal to the pressure at infinity plus one half rho times the, the velocity squared at infinity minus the norm of the velocity um, at the surface of a cylinder at a particular point of theta squared. And this here, we know what this is because we just computed the velocity field um, at, um, at a cylinder. And so we actually know that the velocity at the surface of a cylinder uh, has a zero component in the radial direction and in the tangential direction uh, you find the velocity here so we have to take the sorry the, not the tangential the circumferential direction this is 
our velocity and we're taking this velocity at uh, r equals a and so if you look this finally yields at the surface of the cylinder um, so here replacing r by a this yields that the velocity u theta at r equals a is equal to minus 2 times u sine theta plus gamma divided by 2 pi uh, times a. Okay, so now that we have this, we can compute the forces. So we have just simply to uh, replace this expression with uh, that expression here squared, and uh, we can compute the forces. So the first force we're going to look at is the drag force. And the drag force is going to be the total force uh, exerted in the direction of the flow at infinity. So it's essentially going to be f dotted with the x direction. All right, so here's the drag force. So we are taking our force, so uh, integral from 0 to 2 pi times the pressure field on r, a d, uh, d theta, but we are dotting it with x. Okay, so we have this dot product here. And remember that r dotted with the vector x is simply equal to cosine theta. So if you are dotting this r vector at a certain theta with the x vector, you're taking the dot product, it just gives you the cosine of this small angle here. So this is cosine theta. Okay, I'm not going to compute this uh, integral here, this integral here. So I'm asking you to do it yourself. Uh, but you remember from what we saw in the in the on the on the graphical user interface on MATLAB, you see that you have a pressure field which is symmetric along the y-axis. So if I if I if we remember, if you looked here. You had the same pressure on this side than the pressure on that side, and so what you end up having in the end is that your drag force is equal to zero. So for an ideal flow around a cylinder, we find that the drag force is equal to zero. That is uh, an important result of indicit flow theory, and this is called the D'Alembert paradox. That is the drag, and that is true we'll see that this is true actually for any object um, in, for in viscid flow. Uh, the drag force, which is, ex which is expected from um, ideal flow theory, is equal to zero. All right, now the other force that we can look at is a force which is not in the direction of the infinite flow. So here, our infinite flow is in the x direction, but a flow which is perpendicular to um, the incoming flow, and that force we usually call a lift force. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to we are going to compute uh, the value of the force f of this force f here when we projected in the direction. So we would, when we projected not in the direction of the flow, which is x, but we would project it in the direction normal to the flow, which is y. Okay, so what is this equal to now? This is equal to, like what we had before, the integral from theta equals 0 to 2 pi minus the pressure at the surface of the cylinder, so at r equals to a, the direction is r, dotted with y now, a d theta. Now this time, r y is equal to sine theta. So now we get uh, for the lift equal to minus the pressure, and here we're going to use Bernoulli. So we had the expression before, so the pressure at r equals a is equal to the pressure at infinity minus one half, sorry, plus one half of rho times the velocity at infinity squared minus the velocity at the surface of the cylinder square. And there we only have the component uh, in the tangential direction because there is uh, because of the no, the no penetration boundary condition. So we have minus 2u sine theta plus gamma divided by 2 pi a. And that here should be squared. And all of that is times sine theta a d theta. Now again, I will let you do yourself the details of this calculation, but see that, uh, of course, the, the, the pressure at infinity, it's a uniform pressure field. If you integrate it over the entire surface, uh, that will be equal to zero. Uh, that's a uniform pressure. Same for the u squared term, that will be equal to zero. 
Now here, this square uh, includes three different terms. So you have 4u squared sine theta squared uh, minus 4u sine theta times gamma divided by 2 pi a and then plus gamma squared 4 pi squared divided by 4 pi squared a squared. Now again, if you think about this here, this term is going to have a constant pressure contribution so that when you integrate over the entire surface is going to give you zero um, and then I'll let you do this integral here you find that you have a third power in sine theta and that actually will lead to also an integral which is equal to zero and you'll find that the only part which is non-zero when you integrate is the one that comes from that term here and so in the end my lift force is equal to the integral from zero to two pi of minus one half of rho here I have a minus sign and a minus sign so this is plus so times 4u sine theta gamma divided by 2 pi a and I have a sine theta here times the sine theta so this is so the one sine theta here one sine theta here this is the sine theta squared times a d theta so I have just my differential element of surface left here uh, you see here that the A cancel, that uh, this cancel here, I have a 2 and 4. And so I'm left with, this is equal to uh, rho u minus rho u gamma divided by pi times the integral between 0 and 2 pi of sine squared theta. d theta, you can integrate this here. And it turns out that this, the value of this integral is equal to pi. And one way of seeing that is that the average value of uh, sine squared theta, so sine, 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 sine squared theta is going to be a function between 0 and 1. The average value is actually equal to 1 half. So 1 half times 2 pi is going to be equal to pi. And this is going to e be equal to pi. So finally, your lift force is simply equal to minus rho u gamma. So note here that there is this uh, minus sign here, and that is if the circulation is taken with the real um, general conventions. So if I'm going back to my initial image here, um, if we have the regular con the, the regular uh, convention, then gamma is positive when it's in this direction. When you have a positive gamma in this direction, right, then uh, the lift is going to be in the negative side. right? So it's going to be towards the bottom. Uh, if we have a gamma which is, pos which is in this direction, so in this direction here we have a gamma, a circulation, which is negative. Here we have a negative gamma, and so for negative gamma, we have a positive lift. We have a lift which is uh, pointing towards the top. This is why in aerodynamics, sometimes uh, you take the opposite convention of assuming that gamma is positive in this direction and you take the minus out of the uh, formula for the lift. So you, you, you take the opposite convention for gamma and then you remove this uh, negative sign. So that's the first uh, thing to note. Now there's three things to note. Uh, this is uh, the first one. The other thing to note is you only have, like you saw in the little uh, uh, user graphical interface, you only have lift when there is circulation. And that we saw because if there is no circulation, then the flow velocity and the pressure field is also symmetric with respect to this axis. And, right, and only when the flow was, uh, when there was circulation, did we see a difference in velocity and therefore a difference in uh, pressure. Remember that when you take a negative gamma in this direction, what we saw is that the velocity was slower at the bottom and therefore the pressure higher and the velocity was higher at the top and therefore the pressure lower. So if you, if you integrate that, you get a net lift force uh, upwards. And then the last more, uh, yeah, conceptual uh, observation is that therefore you remember that we said that vorticity is only present in the fluid if you take into account effect of viscosity um, 
and therefore, because an irrotational vortex really represents uh, a singular amount, an infinite amount of vorticity at the center of the at where you place your irrotational vortex, uh, you see here that if you had no mechanism to create this vorticity, which just which we just stuck into the irrotational vortex, then you would have no lift. Right. So if you really completely neglect the uh, effect of viscosity, or if say if you were dealing with uh, superfluid helium, which really literally has no viscosity, so the, the fluid is inviscid, then there is no way of creating circulation around your object, and therefore there would be no lift. This here is usually called the Zhukovsky lift. And we'll see that this is actually the, the, the Zhukovsky lift is the force, the lift exerted around any profile. It doesn't have to be a cylinder. If you have any uh, object in an viscid flow, then the lift on this object is uh, equal to minus rho times u times the circulation if you're taking the uh, convention, a regular convention for the circulation.